Uh, this is Bishop K.J. Brown with Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries, uh, speaking for Marriage First. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, starting on the wrong, starting off on the right foot, starting off on the right foot. Uh, I have uh, been talking for couples for a couple of decades, and uh, something that uh, I've looked at and, and I've observed over the years is that sometimes you meet a couple that the idea that uh, they had for marriage was not the same. They had uh, different ideas for uh, what they looked at uh, for marriage. And so they obviously uh, got a different uh, look at what uh, what they expected out of the marriage because they looked at it from a different different perspective. Um, I, I, one of the first things I do in marriage counseling is I ask people, uh, do you want a Christian marriage? And the reason why I ask them, do you want a Christian marriage is, uh, is that I do biblical marriage counseling and the principles that I use are eclectic to some degree, but it's basically what the Bible teaches about what marriage is. Because sometimes uh, you, you talk to couples and you find out that what they see or what they viewed as marriage was not the same as what the other one was looking at. Uh, we come from different backgrounds. We come from different homes. And so what you might see in marriage and what I see in marriage might be something totally different. And so I always would ask the couples, do you want a Christian marriage? And the reason why I did that is, is that it's so they can try to be on the same page. Uh, I think it's not enough uh, for us to just uh, get married in a church. I, I know that's important to people, but but there are people that get married in church, but don't have a Christian marriage. Uh, matter of fact, there are people that get married in churches, but for the for the aesthetics, how it look and what they you know the, how they want the pictures to come out, but neither one of them is Christian. Uh, so I always before I do marriage ceremonies, I, I require that the couple go to through pre marriage counseling to first of all see if they truly want to get married and number two um what are their ideas on marriage and then also number three to see um what do they believe a christian marriage is so they can both be expecting the same thing uh, the first thing we want to look at is that um and i always going to give you scripture references to whatever we're talking about uh, Genesis uh, 5, 1 through 2, uh, it talks about creation. It's in the creation story. And uh, in the creation story, and I'm just going to look over here to read for a minute. It says, this is the book of generations of Adam. And the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them. And blessed them and gave their name Adam in the day when they were created. All right? Now, the reason why I read that scripture and I talk about that scripture a lot of times in marriage counseling is that the Bible says in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, that he created them. And both their names were Adam. In the King James, that's what it says. I know a lot of people kind of look over that or not read it, but if you look in the King James Version uh, of the Bible, uh, in Genesis chapter 5, verse number 2, uh, he said he, he called their name Adam. And the reason why I emphasize that and uh, not to complicate it is, is that adults get married. I know that might seem super simple, but adults get married. So when you get married, men, 
The woman is not your child to be bossed around. He created them. Men and women have different responsibilities. Men and women have different responsibilities, but men and women have different roles, but God didn't make the man to be superior to the woman. So some people go into marriage uh, from the very start believing that men are superior to women in the marriage. The Bible does not say that. What the Bible says is that the man leads. What the Bible says is that the man is the responsible head. It teaches the responsible head. It teaches uh, an, an order. It teaches order. But it does not teach that man is the husband, is the boss. It teaches that you work together. And we look in the Genesis account, we see that, that both the man and the woman had different responsibilities. And so they had different responsibilities. They were made different. They made different, had different responsibilities. And so they um, operated differently in the marriage. I always bring this out in marriage. Uh, men don't complain. Women don't complain that a man is made different from him than her. And uh, the man doesn't complain that the woman is made different from him. You know, y'all understand what I'm saying. We understand anatomically we made different. And, and that's part of what uh, uh, makes intercourse to be possible because we made different. One has uh, a vagina and the other one has uh, a, a penis. And, and I'm using the uh, medical terms, you know, because we want to keep all this clean, right? So we don't have no problem with that. So we need to understand that even in the natural sense, we don't have a problem with that. Well, in the spiritual and the natural sense, in terms of, uh, of order, we need to understand that God has order and different responsibilities. But number one, the first point I want to make is the man is not better than the woman. And the man is not over the woman. God designed marriage where they work together, but God held the man as the responsible head in leadership. But you are required and you are shown in scripture that you're supposed to be doing it together. The two shall become one. Make sense? So the first thing we need to understand is neither one of y'all is the boss. God is the boss. That's why it talks about a three three chord strand is not easily broken in scripture because it's you, the husband, you, the wife, and, and God. So that's what makes a Christian marriage that is not the two, but the three. That's why in Genesis 2 and 24 and 25, if you allow me to read for a minute again, it says, the there shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they both were naked and the man of his, and his wife and they were not ashamed. Now, now let me tell you why understanding that uh, scripture is so important. If you are not ready, if you are not ready to leave mother and father, and what I mean by that, your household, your, 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 your family, in terms of you having a, another family, you're outside of your original uh, uh, family. It's not mom and dad, but now it's me and wife. If you, don't, if you don't understand that that is another family, then it's going to be some difficulties in your marriage. But at the same time, because this is something that I've, I've cleared up, uh, confusion that people have had because you get married does not mean that you abandon your mother and father. You leave that household, but you on uh, you don't abandon your mother and your father. Um, it would be wrong for um, you to get married and all of a sudden you just forget about your parents. Your family might need physically to be helped. Your family might need uh, medical attention. Your uh, family might need financially to be helped. 
And if it's in your power to do and it does not conflict with your marriage, that's an appropriate thing to do. That's an appropriate thing to do. Uh, I remember uh, many years ago, this was many years ago, uh, and this, um, this man came to me because he had a problem with, um, with uh, the, the finances in the house because the woman would help her mother sometimes. And, uh, and I, the question I asked him, I said, well, have y'all discussed it? And does it hurt the household? Have you all discussed it? And does it hurt the house, household? His question to the question number one is, yes, we have discussed it. Number two, uh, no, it doesn't hurt, hurt the household. We have enough coming to get in that it doesn't hurt to give mom 10, 20, $30 in order to help her, you know, through her month because she's on fixed income. She's a widow. So, but he felt, he did it, but he felt as though since she has left home, she don't need to do nothing for her mom. Scripture teaches us to honor our mother and our father. At no time do we abandon our parents because we're married. You leave mother and father and cling to wife. The two shall become one. But that does not mean to disrespect dishonor or abandon your parents in any way because you're married. I know uh, in the dating period, uh, you talk about a lot of things. You talk about your favorite color and what you like to do and all those kind of things. Well, sometimes we need to be talking about some serious stuff. We need to be talking about uh, things that may be uncomfortable. Uh, if your parents are, are at an age where they may need care or whatever. You need to be married to the kind of man, to the kind of woman that don't mind going, you going to check on your mom. You've been going to check on your dad. You you are buying, even buying some groceries if they need it or making sure they have all the things uh, that they need because there's nothing wrong with that. So don't misunderstand when it says leave mother and father and cleave to wife, that it is saying that you abandon your parents in any way. That does not mean you abandon them financially. That don't mean you abandon them emotionally. You don't abandon your parents, but you do have to take into account and realize that you got to take care of your house too. You got to take care of your house, but it's nothing wrong with helping. Helping is nothing wrong with that. Now, the other thing we want to look at is authority in marriage. I want you, and this is the last scripture I'm going to go over, and I'm going to review in a minute. There are men that I have uh, counseled, and, and, I, and, and I, I'm not going to say any names, <coughs> that they daddy told them that the man is the boss and the woman needs to fall in line. And I'm quoting exactly. They need to fall in line and the woman need to mind and do what I say. Well, I know your dad may have said that depending on what generation he was born in. But scripture does not say that. I want to clear up with one scripture how the Bible teaches mutual submission and order. It teaches mutual submission and order. So if you go into marriage, number one, thinking you're the boss, treating the woman or, or like she's a child, or even the man like he's a child, then that's out of order in terms of what God has put marriage to be. Uh, the Bible says, submit to one another out of reference for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do to the Lord, for the husband is head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body in which he is the savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husband in everything. And then it's on verse number 25, it says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up to her by the washing of water through the word and to present herself, 
her to himself as a radiant church without a strand or wrinkle or a blemish, but holy and blameless. Now, the operations of marriage is what I want you to look at real quick here. The reverence, the submission is to one another in the Christian home as it relates to how Christ says the Christian home is set up. Wives, that does not mean that you have to agree with everything that your husband says or do, but there is a way to respectfully discuss things. That there's a way to do anything. Talk to each other as adults. Talk to each other as Christians. Talk to each other understanding that the word is the final authority. Let me repeat that. Talk to each other as adults. Talk to each other with respect. And also understanding that the word of God is the final authority. So let's look at this for a minute. When you have a Christian home, then the Christian marriage will operate better. When you have a Christian home, the Christian marriage will operate better. So when you operate as a Christian and you operate, operate as God shows wife, when you operate as God shows husbands, then it works better and more effectively as Christians with that Christian marriage. Now, there are a lot of concepts that's been brought in by the world that's not what God ordained. It's not what God says. Uh, Sometimes, every once in a while, you run across a couples that they're having problems in their marriage financially because they because they were taught what was passed on to them is 50-50. You pay half the bills, I pay half the bills. Scripture does not say that. Matter of fact, that if you all don't make the same exact amount of income, that causes immediate conflict. The Bible teaches that you take care of the home. It does not put a financial percentage. It don't say 50-50. 50-50 is a business partnership. That's not a marriage partnership. You might have some bills that you pay. You might have some bills that he pay. But there's two questions that I ask couples all the time. If one of y'all make 50000 and the other make 70, 75000 then you make the 50000 plus the 75000 it's not what he makes alone or what you makes alone, or it might not be that you have no income at all, but you contribute to the household, the operations in the household in such a way that it either preserves, watch this, preserves or makes money or saves money. You might do some things that the household save money. You might do some things that the household is able to preserve money for generations to come. And so all of that counts too. So in the Christian marriage, first of all, be Christians. Understand marriage God ways. Understand that God is the boss. And then also understand that the submission is to each other and to God. Nobody's the boss but God. We have responsibilities. We have roles. But if you want to be on the same page, be on the same page of Scripture so that you both are rowing the same way in the same boat, looking and expecting the same thing, and that's to grow together in love. This is Bishop K.J. Brown, Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries. Just speaking a few minutes uh, on marriage for on on um, marriage first, uh, as it relates to being on the same page and starting in the right place, because if you go into marriage 
with the wrong ideas, on the wrong page, you're both not understanding what marriage is, you're going to have complications. That doesn't mean that you're going to got to break up or you should break up because you're not on the same page or whatever. Get on the same page. You might not be on the same page, but get on the same page. Understand the foundation of marriage. Genesis, what did I say in Genesis chapter 5? He created them. Genesis chapter 2 and 20, 2, 24 and 25, the two shall become one. And then we also talked about the compatibility and the submission and authority in marriage. We need to reverence and we need to be submitted to one another and also submitted to God. This is Bishop K.J. Brown, uh, Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries and uh, speaking uh, for a clip for ma Marriage First. Uh, and remember, as we always say, God wants you to win. Goodbye. Hello, I'm Bishop K.J. Brown, and I want to tell you a little bit about two ministries that work together as one. Zion Tabernacle Church, uh, I'm the founding pastor. Uh, Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries, I'm the founding visionary leader. And what those ministries are about is teaching you how to win God's way. Because I believe that the Word of God has the tools, the principles, the precepts that we need to build winning lives. Uh, matter of fact, the uh, slogan of our uh, uh, church is building winning lives for a coming Lord. I believe the Lord is coming back and I believe we need to be ready, but we got to have the winning tools. And I'm not talking about he's going to come back right now. No one knows the day of the hour. But however, we need to be equipped. We need to be empowered. And so these ministries are all about empowering you with the Word of God to win in your finances, to win in your marriage, to win in your relationships, to win in every way. Because I believe that the Word of God has the answer. Uh, the teaching ministries at Zion Tabernacle Church focuses on you winning, winning as your family, winning as a wife, winning as a husband. Uh, the principles that scripture teaches, not any magic formulas or anything like that, but practical lessons on how we can win God ways. You know what? Because I believe God wants you to win. God wants you to win in every way. And so if you want to be a part of a ministry, if you want to be able to view some things or whatnot, go to our website, bishopkjbrown.org. Bishopkjbrown.org. And you'll be able to see what we're doing with radio, what we're doing with television, what we're doing with podcasting, what we're doing with our phone app, uh, what we're doing um, with the other different types of uh, uh, platforms and, and models that we're using. And all of it is designed just simply to get the word out because we are a word church and we'll continue to be a word church. We don't follow the trends of the world. We follow what the word of God says. So before I leave this video, I want you to remember one thing. And we say it all the time at Bishop KJ Brown Ministry Zion Tabernacle Church. Remember, God wants you to win. Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries presents Are You Ready? An informative written work that breaks down the questions you have always had about the rapture. This informative work is designed to lay out a simple to understand argument using biblical support to get you ready for the rapture. Purchase your copy today by visiting www.bishopkjbrown.org. Click on bookstore link. Now, the question is, are you ready? The greatest miracle is not limbs growing, it's not people being in car accidents and the car flip over and they don't have a scratch. The greatest miracle is salvation. Greatest miracle. Greatest miracle. That's why I believe the greatest value is your soul. The Bible says, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world? That's a lot, y'all. Gain the whole world and lose the soul. 
greatest miracle salvation, the greatest value is your soul. The greatest tragedy is to die and not be saved. Once appointed man to die and after death judgment, where will you spend eternity? That's the greatest decision you can make. Not what neighborhood you're going to live in, whether it's a gated community, all those kind of things. Are, are, are you going to be with Jesus? Oh, preachers say, choose this day. He said, do it while the blood is running warm in your veins. And I was a little boy and didn't understand that, but as I got older and, and, and I learned and stuff, I understood that because I went in the hospitals when the bodies was cold. And now I understood. They said, you know what? You got to make that decision before you take your last breath. The song said he's the only way. Only way.